Hey yo, this is Dash, and I am out in the garage today. Well, this morning, it is early on Saturday, uh, Saturday, April 29th. Uh, it's about 1.15 in the morning, and I'm getting ready to start cooking. Today though, I'm gonna be using one of my smokers. I'm gonna be using Vicky, Vicky here, the vertical smoker. And you see, I have the firebox open, and I'm using, this is the rest of the hardwood, or actually, original natural charcoal, hardwood charcoal logs, all right? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight logs, that one was broken. Eight logs, and if you're keeping count, I used three logs the first time I tried and failed to use those uh, logs and there's eight more so you do that math on the it was a $40 box of charcoal anyway um so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna layer this because I'm gonna be cooking uh, I'll be doing some beef ribs but I'm gonna layer this again as I was saying I'm gonna take these logs here and I'm gonna put some uh, Kingsford briquettes on top of it and then on top of the Kingsford briquettes I'm going to also put um, some Royal Oak lump charcoal um, and then I'll get my I'm gonna get the fire started and get the smoker going but I wanted to show you this before I started everything and started layering everything so again here is the firebox and if you've never met Vicky before and I'm not going to close her up right now yet, just yet but uh, there's the cooking chamber. This is the firebox. And the way this smoker works is she is a reverse flow smoker. Okay. The exhaust comes out here or comes in here and out there. And you see my cooking racks up there that I'm not using currently. And I opened everything up to make it easier for you to see. So you see, I use this smoker quite a lot, okay? I use this smoker for small batches, small jobs, and things like that. So here is my water pan, and this is gonna be the rack that I'm cooking on. In Vicky, there are one, two, three, four racks, or four rack positions, and the other three racks are there. But I'm only going to be using one because I'm just doing a rack of beef ribs, uh, plate beef ribs. All right. So in the water pan, guess what's going in there? Yep, water. And um, so how this smoker works, I started saying that the fire comes in through here, up here, and a little difficult to see, but that ledge there's a ledge here and the, the heat and smoke come out here into the cooking chamber and it kind of goes down out through the back and up to the top of the smoker so this smoker is considered a reverse flow because the heat and smoke come up reverse direction and go out of the back of the smoker uh low and out of the back of the smoker um if you've seen some of my videos in the past using this smoker, you might have seen or know that I've had some difficulty trying to get this smoker to work on just wood. And I've been more, um, I won't say luckier, but I've been able to use it using charcoal better than I've been able to use, it, uh, use the smoker using wood. So primarily I use the charcoal with wood, excuse me, I use the smoker with charcoal and uh, one or two sticks of wood in here for my smoke, all right? But I'm going to uh, get the Royal Lump Charcoal, or excuse me, Royal Oak Lump Charcoal started and get my briquettes in here, get some water in the pan and get it all ready and then I will get the fire into the firebox and let it come up to temperature. I'll be back. Okay, so first step to getting the fire going is to get the charcoal chimney going. All right, so we got the charcoal chimney going. Next step, 
Next step is gonna be to get the charcoal in the firebox alongside with this. So I'm trying to think which I want to do. I'm gonna put charcoal in first or some charcoal in and uh, I'm gonna kind of layer and mix these charcoals together. All right, so I told you already that I put the charcoal logs in here. Now, so that the lump doesn't fall in and down and through, Yeah, so the, the lump doesn't fall down and through. I'm gonna put a little bit of briquettes kind of down. To make an even base here so the lump doesn't fall through. The lump that you'll if you when you see and use the lump charcoal, you'll find that it's um it breaks up into small pieces and those small pieces will fit right through that expanded. So we're going to move some of this around so the lump can't fall through. All right. Spread some of this out. Then now I'm gonna stick, I'm just gonna put <clears throat> one split of wood in here. And then when I, when I, when the um, charcoal finishes uh, coming up to temperature, once that's ready, I'm gonna pour that on top. But I am gonna put a little bit of lump in here. Now you might be asking yourself, what's the point of using some lump, some of these uh, logs, some briquettes? Honestly enough, they're all gonna work together and they will give me a decent you know, amount of smoke and a decent flavor. I hate saying flavor profile, but I'll get that smoky flavor that I'm looking for. So I've had a couple of you guys ask me from uh, one point to another how I get water into the water pans of my um, smokers. I have a hose running from the house down to the garage because I don't have running water in here. And uh, there we go. All right, once this finishes filling up, by the time this is all said and done, the uh, charcoal is actually almost ready in the uh, charcoal chimney. I'll let this fill up probably halfway and then I will get the charcoal loaded. All right, so you see my charcoal chimney. When it's ready, when the flames are coming from the top, I'm gonna shake it just to make sure nothing falls from it. And I'm gonna pour it out. Make sure I have everything. Set that down. And move the charcoal around. Don't burn yourself. Let me get my stick. Spread the charcoal out, move it around so everything gets lit. And uh, now we kind of wait. So I might, depending on how good um, everything is lit, I will either leave this sitting open like this for a little while for the charcoal to kind of light the charcoal that's in the basket. But tonight, because this is actually fairly well lit, I will go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and push this basket into the firebox. It would help. If there's no charcoal, a little bit fell out. All right, so now that door closed just fine. Pardon if you had ash on you for a while. And then now you can see the smoke coming 
from the front of the smoker. Now I'll leave this door open for 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, and then I'll close it and uh, we'll start getting the, the smoker up to temperature. All right, so as the smoker comes up to temperature, you see this uh, thick white smoke coming from the smoker and how slowly it's moving. I'm gonna revisit this in about uh, 20 minutes or so and you'll see the difference. All right, so still out in the garage and uh, it has been about a half an hour. The time is now just about 2.30 and you see how fast the steam Yes, that is uh, steam. There is a little smoke in there. But you see how fast it's rising up and out of the smoker. Here. Woo -woo -woo. There you see my temperature right there in the smoker. Currently 225. Perfect. Good starting temperature, honestly enough. I really don't want this temperature in the smoker to creep up over... Um, Eh, for these beef ribs, I don't want them to creep up over uh, 275. They can stand to cook at 275, but I'm shooting for 250. So what I'm going to do now is the temperature in the smoker is, is going up. I'm going to throttle it and kind of try to get it to level off. And I'm going to do that with this. This is how I ingest the air intake, and it is just a simple... Um, check valve, I guess ball valve, better. And I'm going to choke it off and me choking the smoker down to that will slow down. Me choking off the temperature like that um, will slow down the uh, trajectory of it getting warmer in there. And honestly enough, it, it's changing already because the smoker just dropped in temperature to 223 and you see it's dropping at 219 now what I'm getting ready to do is open up the smoker uh, spray it down on the inside because it's up to temperature um, spray it down with water clean everything out then I'll get the ribs loaded up and I'll bring you back <laughs> yeah you didn't think I was gonna let you not see a picture of these beef ribs before they uh, they got cooked right all right, so this right here is a three bone, I think it's a choice, a three bone plate, all right, rib. And um, for perspective, here's my hand. And, you know, I don't have a small hand, but there is the, uh, those are the ribs. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, get the smoker closed up, and uh, I'm gonna go lay down. Uh, the beautiful thing about this smoker is that I can treat it like one of my drum smokers and I don't have to babysit it. Because I don't have to babysit it, I'm gonna take a nap. Like I said before, time check, it's almost 2.45. All right, so uh, it's a couple hours later and I'm out in my garage. It is now, uh, Almost seven o'clock. Um, I think I kind of jinxed myself because uh, I turned down the uh, thing too much, the uh, intake too much. I just turned it up some. But when I went in the house at three o'clock in the morning, I had been up for almost 24 hours and uh, I crashed hard. Um, so now, I'm actually gonna let the ribs go for a little while longer um, because they were only, when I woke up this morning, they were sitting at 208, 209 degrees. Uh, so it wasn't warm enough. Though they are cooked and they are progressing, I would have liked them to be a little closer to 250. I thought I was gonna be up for a little while to monitor the temperature. But when I went in the house, I crashed within 15 minutes and, and totally slept. I even set an alarm to check on the, um, so I could check on the temperature 
in about two hours, hour and a half, two hours from when I, I went in the house. Apparently I slept through that too. Um, so right now, after I turned it up a little bit, the temperature currently is at 235. I'm going to open it up just a little bit more to let a mo little more air in, in the, uh, the firebox. But I wanted to show you guys what it looked like. So yes, that handle was slightly warm, and I say slightly warm, I, I wouldn't want to touch it for longer than a second or so, but you can see there's a considerable amount of ash, and it seems like those um those tubes are getting it, not tubes, the logs are, uh, are definitely still hot. So <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, like I said, I'm going to watch this for a couple minutes. Let this go for, well, I'm going to say it's up to 250, but that's cause, just because I let a bunch of air in. So let's see if this temperature goes up, goes down. Yep, it's going back down because I, like I said, I left the, opened up the uh, firebox and let a bunch of air in. That's why the temperature was creeping up. I'm going to go ahead and open up the um, inlet almost all the way. Um, it's crazy how finite a, a movement on that uh, check valve it's crazy just how finite a movement that check valve will control how much air comes in through the um, through the firebox, and um, the, the temperature swings pretty quickly. So I'm gonna let this sit out here for another hour. All right, so I'm out of the garage, and I just wanted to show you these. So uh, good, 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 good color in there. All right. The meat is starting to creep up off of the bone, okay? And uh, I like my beef ribs with a little bit of sauce. So I'm gonna put a little sauce on top of these ribs. Let them go, all right? There's some more. Can't really see from the backside. There's not enough light in there. But uh, there's more of the meat creeping off of the bone there. But nonetheless, I'm gonna get some sauce on these things, put them back in here, and we'll be back in a bit. All right, so me cooking the ribs wouldn't be complete without actually showing you how the ribs turned out. And um, I can already tell you that these ribs are that tender. That is what you call a brontosaurus rib. Here we go. All right. Now, of course, the most important thing is mean, how do the ribs taste? A little piece here. <laughs> Ridiculous. All right, so uh, before I close this out, one last thing I get asked about all the time is, how do I keep the inside of the smoker clean? 
And I apologize I don't have more light, but what I typically do before I'm done and the fire goes out, I empty out, there's a drain in the back, so I empty out the drain and I scrape and clean out the inside of the smoker, kind of like deglazing a hot pan. I mean, if you think about it, the, uh, the steel inside of this thing is pretty much just like cooking in a cast iron skillet for the most part. Um, but at any rate, uh, just deglaze it. So when I say deglaze, I, I usually let all of the hot liquid out and then I'll pour some cold liquid in, you know, just some cold water and uh, I'll scrape the bottom of the pan to make sure that I get any uh, residual leftover, you know, cooking grease or whatever was in there out. All right. So uh, thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Check out those cards and things like that up there and uh, check out some of the uh, my favorite barbecue toys and tools down in the description below. Thanks again for watching. See you later.